project organization is really important for Loop Studio. Taking an extra minute to when you start to organize your stuff will save you hours down the down the track. So whenever I start a new song, um, we save it. I always save it into its its own folder, and then uh, also underscore one. The underscore one it means that every time you go save new version or control N, it will automatically automatically increment it there. The other reason that I save it into its own folder is uh, we can set the data folder to that same folder. Now, every time Fruity Loops creates a, a new sample or um, say you, you bounce something out or use a drag sample, it'll automatically save it into the project's folder rather than the default Fruity Loops directories, which are generally in uh, C program files. Um, having all your project files in the one directory, as I said, will save you a lot of heartache down the track, moving computers or giving song files to someone else. Of course, you can always um, export project data files, but this way it stops duplicate files and keeps everything really well organized. Um, another couple of little things about project organization is if you're, say, you've got stems um, and you want to load them into, into your song, um, by default, you'll see that the RAM usage jumps up. Um, now, what you want to do is make sure you can put keep on disk and that'll keep your RAM usage down. In this case, you'll see that keep on disk is grayed out and pressing it doesn't affect our RAM usage. This is because it's actually a 24-bit file, not a 32-bit file. So it's, there's lots of ways of converting it, but the quickest way of doing it and bringing in, say, 24-bit stems is to actually right-click on the file and go edit in an audio editor and then just drag it straight in. You'll see that's uh, it's automatically made it 32-bit and if you look at the RAM usage up there it does change and especially if you've got lots of large files this can really make a difference to um, Fruity Loops 